Hi everyone. This is a video on Derek Walcott's poem titled Ruins of a Great House. Derek Walcott was born as Derek Alton Walcott on 23 January 1930 in Castries, St. Lucia in the West Indies. He had a twin brother named Roderick Walcott who was a playwright. Walcott in his early stage of his life was trained as a painter. Later, he turned to writing. He published his first poem at the age of 14. Later, he moved to Trinidad in 1953 where he became a critic, teacher and a journalist. He was a professor of poetry at the University of Essex from 2010 to 2013. Critics consider his poem titled Omeros, which was a Homeric epic poem, as one of his best poems because uh, according to them it touches uh, every aspect of Caribbean experience because it was a poem that it reimagined the Trojan War as a Caribbean fisherman's fight. His works celebrate the Caribbean and its history as well as investigate the scars of colonialism. His later collections include Typolo's Hound, The Prodigal, Selected Poems, White Egrets, and Morning, Paramin. In 1992, Walcott won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Walcott died in the year 2017. If we take his uh, works in general, the themes that we can find are Caribbean uh, culture and history, the effects of colonialism, race and racism, relationship to one's own language. Now coming back to our poem, Ruins of a Great House, it was written in the year 1956. It's one of his early poems and it got published in his work A Green Night in the year 1962. At a broader level, Ruins of a Great House focuses on history, colonialism, literature and corruption. The British colonized much of the Caribbean during the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries, setting up vast plantations worked by black slaves who were subjected to abominable cruelties. Though repelled by the actions of the British towards native African peoples, the poet reconciles with the fact that he writes in and is heavily influenced by the English language and the British, uh, the Albion, which is another word for uh, the British, was also once dominated by the Greek. So he finds that colonization is only an inevitable continuity, a continuum in the history. And so he has an ambivalent attitude towards the culture of uh, Great Britain. He has a hate-love relation uh, with the British. This is how the poem begins. The poem has an epitaph that is taken from the work written by Thomas Brown titled Earn Burial. Though our longest sun sets at right declensions and makes but winter arches, it cannot be long before we lie down in darkness and have our light in ashes. See this epitaph it's a short quotation from the start of the poem proper. He is from Thomas Brown, who was an English writer and polymath, who wrote the book Hydriotaphia, Urn Burial, in 1658, detailing the discovery of ancient Roman burials and coals from funeral pyres in his native land. This work, Urn Burial, contains description of the antiquities he found 
and it's uh, rather like a survey of the most of the burial and funerary customs, ancient and current. Walcott chose this course, court, because he highlights the nature of death and the idea of colonization. And he finds that this is a continuum. The Romans, in fact, took over Albion, the Britain, and naturally the British took over the Caribbean. So this is all part of human history. And you know, though our longest sun sets at right declensions, right declensions means right decline, and makes but winter arches, it cannot be long before we lie down in darkness and have light in ashes. Here, the poet arguably seeks to say that summer season will give way to the winter season. The longest sun um, uh, sets at the right declensions and makes but winter arches. And the light will finally end up in darkness. It cannot be long before we lie down in darkness and have our light in ashes and everything would turn out into ashes because this is the rule of nature. So the poet has purposefully um, used this epitaph to drive home the idea that human life is a continuity, is a continuum. Now Walcott starts the poem with, with these very interesting lines. Stones only, the disjecta membra of this great house, whose moth-like girls are mixed with candle dust, remain to file the lizard's dragonish clothes. See, um, the poet uh, refers to a great house. We know that the title is The Ruins of a Great House. What does this great house signify? signify? The great house refers to, at a, at a very primary level, it is the, it is, it's a, it's a ruined uh, plantation house. It's a, it's a, a house uh, that is destroyed. So the, the poet uses the word disjecta membra, which means it, it's a word from Latin, which means scattered fragments. So um, this is uh, taken from Horace. Disjecta membra poetia, which means probably uh, limbs of a dismembered poet. So at a primary level, it's about a, a royal house or a plantation house that may have belonged to the royals or rich people. And at a secondary level and a broader level, the poem is about the great British. This great house refers to the great British and so this is about the fall of the British colonization or the British Empire. Now whose moth like girls are mixed with candle dust, remind to file the lizard's dragonish clothes. It, here we have the moth like girls means the beautiful girls who once lived and worked there in that plantation house who perhaps moved around the lights at night like moth, but now are the part of the same dust that was lit by the candles. And you know, you can find the lizards, the lizards in the house that can uh, sharpen their dragon-like clothes on the walls of the house. So the first three lines um, is, uh, house refers to the ruinous, disintegrated state of a house and state of an empire or the fall of an empire. Now, the poet tells that the mouths of those great cherubs shriek with stain. This line also shows how decayed and how destroyed and ruined the house, the plantation house is.
See the mouths of those gaped roofs shriek with stain. See the house has a gate which has uh, the statue of a cherub, statue of angels. And you know when it opens it, it shriek with stain. So there are stains on the statues. Uh, and the poet says that the decaying statues of angels on the gates give the impression that they are shrieking with their stained mouths. In fact, cherubs uh, mean winged unearthly beings from the Bible stories who guarded the entrance to the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve lived. Now, um, the poet continues, Axle and coach wheel silted under the muck of cattle droppings. Three crows flap for the trees and settle, creaking the eucalyptus buffs. A smell of dead lime quickens in the nose, the leprosy of empire. Again, the poet gives the picture of a past glory as well as the picture of a uh, of decay disintegration and destruction see axle and coach wheel silted under the 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 muck means the could be a vehicle that is stuck under the mud and you know there are cattle droppings as well uh, three crows the harbingers of doom and evil doings are in the eucalyptus trees whose branches creak as the heavy birds settle down for the roost. And there is also a smell of uh, dead limes that quickens in the nose. The leprosy of empire. Here leprosy uh, in fact is a disease, a serious one sometimes and involves disfigurement and disability if left untreated. So the idea that empire was contagious like leprosy and if touched meant certain doom for some. Now farewell green fields, farewell ye happy groves is taken from Blake's poem titled Night, the theme of which is good versus evil. Walcott, in fact, has extended it a little, but the sentiment remains the same. Here the speaker is suggesting that when empire is around you, you can say goodbye to freedom and happiness. Now, marble like Greece, like Faulkner's South in Stone. The poet compares the old, uh, the, the British uh, uh, the British colonial power that is a that has become part of history like marble in Greece or the Faulkner's South in Stone. Greece here implies that it's, a, it's an ancient culture now has become defunct and dysfunctional and in the same way uh, uh, Faulkner as a writer had a love-heat relationship with the South which, he, which resonates with the with Walcott's own approach towards the British. Again, the poet refers to the laws of beauty of the house, which is like deciduous uh, trees that leaves that shed their leaves every year, and um, it becomes part of history. And if you dig up if you dig up with a metal spade, it will ring against the hard bone of animal or human who have been killed by the empire. So once again, the picture of that decay and disintegration. So uh, an ironic quotation on green fields and happy groves highlights the rotting estates present. The marble of the ruined house reminds the speaker of similarly ruined marble in ancient Greece and in the old south of Fokna. Among the very few surviving trees, the leaves hide the remains of human or animal fallen due to the evil system of slavery. 
now i will present the explanation of the rest of the poem in the coming uh, part of the video thank you